Russia, the largest country in the world located in the north of Eurasia, covering 11 time zones. Once Churchill said, Russia is a riddle wrapped in a mystery inside an enigma. So let's try to figure it out. Let's start. Russia is a cold country. It's true. In some northern cities of Russia like Yakutsk, those who own cars have to park their vehicles in heated garages with a blanket wrapped around the battery. And when they drive, they keep the engine running all day. It is the largest country in the world with an area of 17 million square kilometers. That is twice more than the United States. But actually, only 35% of that territory is suitable for living. The remaining 65 is occupied by permafrost. The agricultural season in most parts of the country is just two to four months. For comparison, in Europe and the US it is eight to nine months. The landscape varies from tundra, steppes, forests, to mountains and subtropical beaches. Russia has several major parts. The European part, the south, the Urals, Siberia and the Far East. 77% of the population lives in the European part of the country and here it's mostly uninhabited. The most typical landscape of Russia will be something like this. For 2016, according to the International Monetary Fund, Russia ranks 12th in terms of nominal GDP. The economy is predominantly based on raw materials, which comes as no surprise knowing the enormous natural reserves of Russia. First place in the world in natural gas and forest reserves, sixth place in oil reserves, second place in coal reserves and so much more. The World Bank estimates the value of all Russia's natural resources at 75 trillion dollars. Impressive, right? Since Russia was so lucky with natural resources, it would seem logical that the average salary in the country should be no less than it is in Europe. But that's not the case. In 2016 it was only 28,000 rubles or $450 a month. So while the country is rich, the population is poor. As in many developing countries around the world, there is a huge income gap. Minimum salary is just $120, while the salary of a member of the Russian parliament is around $7,000 a month. Even professions that are considered to be well paid in the West get paid little in Russia. The average salary of a doctor is just $700 a month and $450 for a nurse. The state controls 70% of the economy. Therefore, the largest companies in Russia are state-owned raw materials companies like Gazprom and Rosneft or monopolies like Russian Railroad and the Russian Post. As the case in the rest of the world, state-owned companies are not exactly examples of innovations in modern technologies. But what about private business? In Russia, there are some successful private companies such as Magnet, Supermarket Chain, Yandex, Internet Company, Tinkoff, Online Bank, Kaspersky Lab, VK Social Network and others. But even they seem to be very much under the government control in terms of what they can and cannot do. And it's sad because at one point Russia was one of the few countries where Google and Facebook actually faced local competition. But things turned dismal in the end. On the bright side, many services in Russia cost less than they do in the West. Taxi prices, the internet, electricity and cell communications well below their Western counterparts. What then prevents Russia from taking a leading role in the world? There are a lot of reasons, but it's enough to mention corruption and endless bureaucracy and you get the picture. A hundred years ago, 85% of Russia's population was rural. Today, three quarters live in the cities. Let's take a look at the biggest. Moscow. Moscow is the dream city for the majority of Russians. Salaries here are three to five times higher than in the rest of the country. The Moscow subway serves 9 million passengers a day. This is more than the subways of New York and London combined. Everybody's running and no one speaks English. That's how foreigners describe the city. In 2016, Moscow was the third city in the world with the largest number of billionaires. 60 people to be exact, just right after New York and Hong Kong. St. Petersburg one of the most beautiful cities in Russia, North Venice, famous for its drawbridges and white knights. Foreigners adore St. Pete and say it reminds them of Paris and Rome. On Nevsky Prospect, there is a higher chance of hearing foreign speech than Russian. Novosibirsk, the third largest city. It's a city in Siberia and the scientific capital of Russia. It's famous for its Akademgorodok, which accommodates several research institutions. One of the greenest cities in Russia. 
Yekaterinburg is a phenomenal place with a deep history and a rich culture, the gateway between Europe and Asia, the hometown of Russia's first president, the world leader in consumption of mayonnaise, according to the Guinness Book of World Records. But seriously, Yekaterinburg is one of the most developed post-industrial areas in the country, which has its valuable natural and intellectual resources. Kazan, the capital of Tatarstan, the largest port on the bank of the Volga. It has two cultures, Tatar and Russian, peacefully coexistent. The main attraction is, of course, the Kazan Kremlin. And the fastest growing city in Russia, Krasnodar. Many residents of the northern regions move here for a warmer climate. It's near the mountains and only two hour drive from the Black Sea coast. Villages in Russia are in a deplorable state. The rural population is shrinking everywhere. People are living for larger cities. Many villages have been abandoned altogether. Sadly, there is no place for them in modern Russia reality. In most villages today, the hope for a future is slowly disappearing, and with that, disappears a very important part of the Russian culture. Secondary education is very fundamental, and is in no way inferior to the Western, and in many ways it surpasses it. Russia has been suffering from brain drain ever since the collapse of the USSR. Many people are overqualified for their positions, and in small towns there are simply no opportunities for them to build a career, which forces young professionals to move to Moscow or abroad. In 2013, Russia was visited by 28 million tourists. The most popular destinations are Moscow and St. Pete, of course, resorts of Krasnodar region, ski resorts, the Golden Ring of Russia, and cruises along the Volga. Foreigners love long trips along the Trans-Siberian Railroad, visiting Altai Mountains and Lake Baikal, traveling to Kamchatka Volcanoes and cruises on an icebreaker to the Russian Arctic National Park. By the way, Lake Baikal is the deepest lake in the world and the largest source of fresh water on the planet. The Siberian taiga is the largest forest in the world, the lungs of the planet. Most Russians live in modest apartments. Surprisingly, possessing enormous territories, Russians continue to build high-rise apartment buildings 20 or more floors. Many Russians have summer houses, country cottages, where they can have picnics and grow vegetables and flowers all summer. Russia takes the third place in the world after the US and China in the length of railroads. The longest route is the Trans-Siberian Railroad from Moscow to Vladivostok, crosses seven time zones and almost takes a week. Public transport in large cities is well developed. You have trams, buses, trolley buses, fixed route taxi buses. Seven cities have an underground subway. Subway stations in Russia are generally works of art. Roads construction has always been a controversial issue. Most federal roads do not meet modern standards of quality and safety. Extremely small number of freeways. The construction of new roads is slow. Russia has its own car manufacturer, Avtovaz, whose share in the Russian car market is 19% for 2016. The best-selling cars that same year were Hyundai Solaris, Lada Granta and Kia Rio. Many foreigners come into Russia and expect to see lots of street crime and the Russian mob, and are very surprised that in fact everything is civilized and peaceful. Nevertheless, the statistics don't lie. The murder rate for 100,000 people is 9.5. Compare that to the US where it's 3.8, Belgium where it's 1.8, and Canada where it's 1.5. At the same time, if you compare the statistics on rape for 2010, in Russia this figure was 3.4, in the US 27.3, which is almost 10 times higher, in Belgium 27.9, and in Sweden 63.5, so 20 times higher. So where are you going to feel safer traveling with your wife and daughter? Despite the fact that there is free medicine in Russia, the quality of services is very low. Life expectancy is just 65 years for men and 76 for women. At the same time, the birth rate in Russia is higher than it is in Europe. 13.3 per 1,000 people versus the European Union 10.1.
dealing with government agencies, whether obtaining any kind of certificate, going to the police, etc., is associated with a huge loss of time and stress. According to Corruption Perception Index from Transparency International, Russia is among the 50 most corrupt countries in the world. Customer service in Russia has traditionally been at a low level. Often you can meet the lack of smiles and indifference of employees. Vladimir Putin has been in power since 1999 and is probably going to stay that way. Truth is, most Russians simply vote for the person they show on TV the most. Freedom of speech has been compromised and many journalists Oh shit, is the KGB knocking on my door? Russian cuisine is very tasty, but it almost never falls into the top world ratings. Perhaps because it doesn't have an abundance of fresh fruit and vegetables, as well as a large number of fatty and flour dishes, mayonnaise and pickles. Today, pizza, burgers and sushi can be found everywhere. In 2001, less than 13% of Russians preferred grain coffee. And in 2015, it was 41%. Foreigners love to visit fast food places in Russia. First, they can offer you beer. And secondly, they're much cleaner and nicer than in the US. No homeless people here. The food scene has improved dramatically. You now have burger places, craft beer bars, Asian restaurants, and so on. It's no secret that Russian women are beautiful. Even the slightest excuse to go out will make them want to apply makeup and put on high heels. Russians are very different from Europeans and Americans. A smile without a reason does not always find understanding. Try to smile at someone on the subway. Most likely, you will simply be ignored, or they will regard it as flirting. In Russia, it is considered weird to smile at people that you don't know. Most Russians are very patriotic. They like to have tea and vodka parties in the kitchen and argue about politics and life in general. Foreigners get surprised to learn that cold Russians can become very hospitable people. Russian is the second most popular language on the internet after English and one of the six official languages of the United Nations. But do Russians speak English? Actually, let's find out. Excuse me, do you guys speak English? No? Okay. Hey, excuse me guys, do you speak English? No? Okay. Hey, excuse me, do you speak English? No? Okay. <clears throat> well, apparently not so many. In Russia, sports are very popular. Football indisputably holds a leading position. Also popular are hockey, basketball, volleyball and boxing. Russia is known throughout the world for its achievements in gymnastics and figure skating. In recent years, the popularity of a healthy lifestyle is becoming noticeable. In large cities, many fitness centers have opened up. Also, lots of ski resorts. In winter, such unusual sports are popular like rally on ice, winter kiting and even winter cycling. Russian is the second most popular language on the internet after English and one of the six official languages of the United Nations. Russians have many unique traditions such as visiting bathhouses or banyas, swimming in the ice hole in a 20 degree below temperature, winter fishing, hunting, long celebrations and saying long toasts. Russia is a wonderful country. Beautiful nature, wonderful people and a harsh climate with endless territory. I think Russia has great potential and many opportunities. And what do you think about Russia? 